everyone, welcome back. I'm sorry it's been so long since my last video. <clears throat> I've just been having a lot of issues going on. Um, but today I'm going to do a watercolor painting on um, my Arches 140-pound uh, uh, block. This is 100% cotton paper. It's 9 by 12. Uh, this is an old block I had. <laughs> uh, and I wanted to do a scene kind of a fall scene, um, and I thought I'd do a mailbox in the country, and <clears throat> I don't know why, a mailbox just came to my head the other day, and I wanted to do it, so I went online on Google, and I was looking at a bunch of different photos um, on Google on country mailboxes, and when I did that, I, saw, I found all sorts of mailboxes, so... I just kind of got a picture in my mind from a bunch of different mailboxes that I saw, and I kind of made up my own scene here. <clears throat> and I've, I've just sketched it on lightly. I wanted the mailbox to be the focal point, so I put it down here in the corner, and it's going to be fairly large. I think I'm going to have a tree branch coming down, or a couple tree branches coming down. Um, some trees off in the distance, some hills... Here's a road. Um, obviously, if you have a mailbox, you're going to have a road right nearby. So, um, And then I, I thought I'd just put a little bit of a fence in the background. But it's done lightly in pencil, and a lot can change along the way. So um, I'll go ahead and get started. I'm just going to grab my silver black velvet three-quarter inch oval, and I'm going to wet my paper fairly well here. I think I'm just going to wet the whole thing up here for the sky and um, get it pretty saturated. If you use 100% cotton paper, you really have to put the water on. You can spray it on with a spray bottle. Um, I have a spray bottle here, just a, a small one that you can use and do it that way. Spread it around or you can just let it sit. If you do spray, then what um, you'll want to do is make sure that the areas you don't want wet are dried. And you can do that by just taking a paper towel or Kleenex or something, some sort of tissue, and then just dabbing the area that you don't want wet. And um, that's pretty much it. Now my sky, I want to do a cloudy kind of a dark sky, a threatening, a storm kind of threatening sky. So I'm going to go ahead and mix up some ultramarine blue, which is a good granulating color. Um, at least Daniel Smith is granulating. I think all ultramarine blue is granulating if they're using the pigment um, that everybody uses, which is PB29, I believe. Um, and then you can use some burnt umber, burnt sienna, um, some uh, raw umber, some Van Dyke brown. <clears throat> I'm going to grab some Van Dyke brown here and mix that in. And I'm going to make a nice dark sky, leaning toward the blue side, but I want it real dark. And I'm just going to kind of drop that in. And this is going to... Um, I'm, not, I'm not putting... Uh, I'm not directing this anywhere. I'm just kind of dropping it in and letting it do its own thing. In fact, I think I'm going to prop it up on the sponge so that I get a little slope. I want to have a nice big white cloud in the center. And it's going to fade. Need a little more water. That's the other thing with cotton is that your water is going to um, dry, soak in real fast. So you have to do it a couple times usually. Couple white areas in here. 
mixed up a little more. Make sure you leave some white on the paper. And I'm just going to let this dry. I think that's about all I want to do. Take a little more of this out. Just a little bit here. It should be good. Now, as that's drying, um, and you want to let it dry. Don't dry it with a dryer at all or a heat gun or anything like that because if you, <clears throat> if you want to get the granulation effect, which is what I'm going, here, going for here, you've got to let it dry on its own and do its own thing. You can see how these colors are already beginning to change. If you hand dry it with a dryer, you're going to lose all this pretty granulation effect that I'm getting here. See how it's kind of grayer in spots and then it gets bluer and over here it almost takes on a yellowish kind of a hue right up in here um you won't get that if you try to dry it on your own so just let it go let it do its own thing and then come back to it if there's an area of white that you're trying to save and it's bleeding in too much just dab it with the paper towel like that and that will help preserve those whites a little bit. Don't overdo it though. Now I'm gonna move on to another area <clears throat> of the painting and I'm gonna go ahead and um, speed this up a little bit so that it's not gonna be a super long video. I'm just mixing up a little bit of rich green gold. All of my colors here are Daniel Smith, I believe, except for the Payne's Gray, which is actually a tube of Cotman. And that is one Cotman color I really like is their Payne's Gray. Um, but I am eventually will change away from that. I'm just using it up. It was a big tube. But I'm putting this rich green gold over everything, and I know it looks a little freaky right now, but don't worry. I want to get that glowing effect a bit. Um, and I want to granulate in some more um, ultramarine blue um, with the green, or to make the green. But I want to keep kind of a glowing effect from the stormy clouds. You know how in the fall it gets real stormy looking and then you get this, almost this glow to the trees and everything. That's what I'm trying to maintain here. But I did make a few errors because I wasn't, I should have had my composition completely planned out and the only thing I had planned was the sky, the road, and the mailbox. The rest of it I was kind of winging it. So next time I will make sure that I do a sketch on the side and stick with that plan. This is just a little bit of, um, I believe it was some more Van Dyke Brown. And now I'm washing in some yellow ochre. I put a stronger color down at the bottom and then I just used some water on my brush to spread it around. Um, <clears throat> I'm gonna give it a little bit of a spray with the spray bottle too. And then I'm gonna let that go for a little while and I'll come back to it. Oh, no, I guess not. I'm doing it right now. <laughs> I used some Payne's Gray and Van Dyke Brown 
um, to put the tire tracks in the road. And now here I'm using some of the um, uh, what is that? New Gamboge by Daniel Smith to plug in some trees here. And then I'm going in with some Quinacridone Sienna, which is a real beautiful orangey red color. Very bright, a lot brighter than burnt sienna. So if you're going to do that and don't have that color, I would go with like a cadmium red or something like that, which would be similar. And then I, I used some of that rich green gold and put a little bit of my blue in with it in order to get the, the bushes down below the trees. And I wasn't planning for trees on this side and changed my mind. So my grass, or my grass, my trees are mixed in with that deep blue and brown in the sky, which is kind of taking that glow away from them. But the one side is glowing and that actually looks a little more natural. Like one is in shadow and the other one is in some sort of sunlight. On the mailbox, I started with a little bit of burnt sienna and then I just took some ultramarine on my brush and mixed some gray on the mailbox itself. This way I get a little bit of different value and different tones of grays and browns on the mailbox, which is what I wanted to do. And um, then I'll be adding in some of the quinacridone sienna, I believe, to give it some rust later some more rust look but um, I'm leaving that for now Again, I'm taking some yellow ochre for the wood post on the mailbox. And then I'm gonna go in with some Van Dyke Brown and some Payne's Gray in order to kind of age it. I'll let it dry and then I'm gonna come back to it again later. I didn't like how dark that pigment got. It was just a little bit too heavy, so I lifted some of the color off of it. This brush I'm using here is currently one of my favorite brushes. It is a Raphael brush. Um, I got it a little bit cheaper though by buying it through Billy Shoal, S-H-O-W-E-L-L, -L, who is an artist. And she has these brushes. Uh, she's a botanical um, artist and she's written some beautiful botanical books too but she uses these brushes these these are the brushes she uses so she's got her name on these brushes and I bought it on Amazon and I believe it's a size six but these brushes are um, they're not synthetic so if you don't like using animal hair then you want to stay away from this but it uh, is Kalinsky Sable it actually might be a mix, but I think it's just Kalinsky Sable. And it comes to such a fine point. It is amazing. And it holds so much pigment. I really like, like this brush. 
It's probably one of my favorite brushes. No, it is one of my favorites. I've been using it a lot lately. I've had it for, oh, I don't know, about six months to a year. But um, I've really gotten into using it now, and I like it a lot. Right about here I realized I made a huge mistake and decided to turn this into a tree rather than just branches coming down. What I really should have done is brought the branches down from the upper left hand side and across down over the mailbox and that would have framed the mailbox out real well. This didn't work so I turned it into a tree although a whole, not a whole lot would show underneath a mat or frame anyway because it's right along the edge. But uh, I had to do that because it just wasn't coming out right for me. I'm just using a size one uh, script brush or rigger is another name for them. Um, I'm just putting some seed pods on the top of some old grasses that have turned brown for the fall.
here I've decided to um, pull out my Dr. P.H. Martin's Hydrus watercolor in white. Instead of using gouache, I wanted to stick with the watercolor, so I'm using this white watercolor to um, just put some highlight on the trees where the uh, light from the sky would be shining on it. I didn't make it too heavy though because this is a cloudy sky but there is light shining through that white area of the clouds so I wanted to have some light on the trees otherwise they look too flat. And I'll also be doing it to the mailbox itself in order to highlight on the metal of the mailbox. Here I decided to put in a little bit of quinacridone gold in order to um, just give a golden look to the grass, like it's changing for the winter. Um, and I did add a little bit of the green in there too because I felt it got a little bit too gold. So I used some of the rich green gold um, as well to tone it down a bit. liking how I did these trees. I want more leaves on them, but I'm just going to do it in a natural way. I'm grabbing some paper towel here. Sorry for the wiggle. And I want to um, keep all this dry, but I want to uh, just splash it on. So I'm just going to grab some pigment and hope for the best here. See what happens.
That looks better already. I like that. And then over here, I'm going to take some of my Negridone Sienna and do the same thing. Just to give it a more natural, natural look here. Or a looser look. That's what I'm going for. The yellow, I want just a bit more up here. And right there. Take the big clumps out. I don't want the big clumps. That'll work. Yeah, I like that better. I think I better leave well enough alone at this point. By the way, to everyone who's been asking, my father is home from the hospital and things are looking much better for him. He was diagnosed with COPD though, so that is new for him and he's, he's dealing with it, but um, thank you for all the prayers and well wishes. They were so, so appreciated. Remember, be courageous, paint with wild abandon, and most of all, be kind to each other. God bless you all. Bye-bye.